Uh, thank you. Okay, next up, we actually have a workshop um, that we have uh, provided that will give you some insights uh, from a variety of panelists in terms of how you could tap into Southeast Asia's 300 billion tech economy. Um, but before we commence with the workshop, I wanted to hand over the time to my colleague, uh, Alberini Sim, who is the regional vice president from our Singapore Global Network for a sharing to kickstart the, the session. Uh, Alberini, please. Thank you, Dave. I hope you can hear me. Well, a warm greetings and good afternoon from Singapore and a very good morning to those who are tuning in from Europe or are physically present at Wolf's um, Summit. I am Elberini Sim from the Singapore Global Network, which is a part of the Singapore Economic Development Board. Let me just share my screen. Just give me a second. Okay, I hope you are able to see my screen. Okay. So um, just a sh brief introduction about the Singapore Global Network. Um, the Singapore Global Network's role and work are about building relationships with individuals and partners with a shared affinity to Singapore to widen and strengthen this network to, in order to better facilitate the exchange of ideas, resources, and even talent and business opportunities. Many of our offerings also provide opportunities for our members to connect with one another. We grow an international community of our Singaporeans abroad, um, including our friends of Singapore, um, those who have lived and worked uh, in our city state, as well as fans of Singapore for those who would like to know about us more. Through growing a, a, a community or growing community of our members and partners, we wish to firstly attract talent who can contribute to Singapore, build strong relationships with those who can forge connections to Singapore to create opportunities for us, and lastly, to collaborate with people and partners that are able to share their experiences and insights on Singapore and Southeast hey, Asia. Hey, Albert Rene. Yes. Hi, this is Tuan here. Before yes. we continue further with the workshop, we are not yes. able to see your slides yet, Albert. Oh, you are not you able? Try sharing that again. Yeah. Okay, let me try that. Thank that. you. Okay. Well, let's see. Are you able to see it now? Looking good. All good. Okay, awesome. Great. So I'll just um, begin from where, I'll rather continue from where I um, left off. So as I was sharing about the role of the Singapore Global Network, so we are engaging a, uh, our community of our Singaporeans abroad, our friends of Singapore who have lived and worked in the city state, as well as fans of Singapore who are simply just quite keen to learn about Singapore and the region. So these are the reasons as to why we would like to connect with you really for talent connections and advocacy purposes. And just a brief um, sharing in terms of the growing communities that SGN has built along the way. Firstly, it's really a growing and vibrant Southeast community where our members in the region have benefited from connecting and gathering insights from our network of members as well as partners. So we do run regular events such as Coffee Connections, where it is a regular virtual networking session where you were able to converse and hear from you know, industry experts, um, from them about business insights on the sector that they specialize in, including the tech ecosystem in Singapore. And very often such platforms also allow you to connect with the members of our Southeast Asian community. And secondly, one of SGN's focus areas is really about building a vibrant and that, sorry, yes, building a vibrant and dynamic tech ecosystem where the community can connect with, mentor, advise, and collaborate with one another in this space. So we do this through a growing and vibrant Tech 65 community comprising of tech professionals across companies, um, industries, roles, as well as countries. I'll share details on how you can connect with us 
and gain access to this vibrant Tech 65 community slightly later. And as a member of our Singapore Global Network, there we have a diverse digital channels where we keep our members um, and the public updated about our upcoming initiatives and really news about the region. And as a member of SGN, you will be the first to know about the events that we are organizing, including webinars covering a wide spectrum of topics and industry insights, including tech, Singapore and Southeast Asia. Our content covers a wide range of topics from lifestyle and culture um, to business insights. So do visit our portal at singaporeglobalnetwork.gov.sg and have a look at the content that we create. And not only do we produce regular content on life in Singapore and the region, we also offer resources for our audiences who might be keen to find out how to navigate relocating to Singapore. So this guide covers key industries, in-demand jobs in Singapore, and the regional trends that might be of interest to you. And you can also download these guides at our um, website. And I want to share with you an upcoming virtual event entitled Sustainable Food for Thought on 3rd of November at 10 a.m. CET. If you are able to join us, please join us and our esteemed panel of uh, panelists um, and join us on our discussion on the trends, disruptions and opportunities between Europe and Southeast Asia in the field of agri-food tech. So to sign up, do scan the QR code on the screen and they'll lead you to the registration page. And lastly, I would like to end my presentation by inviting you to connect with us and visit our website at singaporeglobalnetwork.gov.sg um, and you know, uh, be a part of us. And you can join us also by scanning the QR code on the screen. Um, thank you so much for joining us today. And I hope you will find our session and workshop today useful. I'd like to now pass the time over to Tuan from SG Innovate, who will be moderating the panel discussion. Thank you very much, Alberini. Uh, hi, everyone, or should I say, Zin Dobri. My name is Tuan from SG Innovate. And uh, before I start the panel discussion with our esteemed speakers, I would like to spend the next seven to eight minutes to share with you about deep technologies and how Singapore and Southeast Asia deep tech economy are brewing and ways that startups from Central and Eastern Europe or, or Europe uh, in general could actually leverage our networks to access the market in Singapore. I would now like to share my screen just a bit. Could I confirm if the screen is being seen just to avoid? All right. Yes, yeah, so I think before I get started on sharing about the uh, Singapore's and Southeast Asia deep tech economy, uh, I want to share a little fun fact about Singapore. So for the past couple of years, the Polish community in Singapore has been running a very exciting annual program that introduces the best of Poland's innovation, creative industries, food and culture to Singapore audiences under this umbrella branding called Poland Shiok. And why is this interesting? Uh, it is because Shiok, S-H-I-O-K, is actually a local term that usually refers to fantastic, exciting, enjoyable, uh, experiences often used to talk about food and uh, what is better than you being able to speak the local language uh, or what we colloquially refer to as Singlish uh, as you access a new market in Southeast Asia through Singapore. And I got to say that I have thoroughly been enjoying a lot of the activities. And uh, we also worked with the Poland uh, community to host some of these uh, activities in Singapore. And we do hope that you will be able to join us uh, in some of these programs moving forward. Now, if I may go uh, into what SG Innovate does, we are a relatively young organization at about five years old. We are set up by the Singapore government to help build deep technology startups for Singapore. Deep tech would refer to science intensive technologies such as artificial intelligence, self-driving cars, quantum technologies that could be applied across industry. 
how do we go about helping deep technology startups to scale from Singapore? We invest in these companies at the early stage. To date, we have done so in about 80 different companies across a range of industries. In addition, we also develop the talent marketplace for such companies. So in Singapore right now, there is very high demand for technical talent, such as AI developers, machine learning experts, and so on. And SG Innovate is actually pioneering Singapore's deep tech talent marketplace that can help to connect startups who are growing with the right talent candidates uh, in a more effective manner. In addition, our community building work has also resulted in the fastest growing deep tech ecosystem in Singapore and the region uh, at over 70,000 stakeholders, many of whom are corporates and SMEs, as well as investors who may want to actually take a look at working with startups or investing in startups. And this is the uh, uh, three different ways that SG Innovate has been helping to build the deep tech uh, innovation ecosystem and startups from Singapore. The deep tech uh, focus actually enables us to be singularly uh, uh, developing our expertise in key domains such as sustainability, agri-food, advanced manufacturing, medical technologies. Uh, some of these are also the strength that we have been seeing uh, from startups from Poland as well as other parts of Europe who have expressed interest in the, uh, accessing the Singapore and Southeast Asian market over the past uh, 18 months despite COVID-19. In addition to these core areas of focus, we also pay attention to urban solutions such as transportation, cybersecurity, and of course, anything that may be related to quantum technologies as well as artificial intelligence. Now, I want to now highlight the, the two quick ways that SG Innovate and our government partners could help support startups from Europe with interest in entering the Southeast Asian market. We leverage the large deep tech networks that we have built to help connect international startups with regional customers as well as potential partners. This year alone, we have worked with the Polish uh, Trade and Investment Agency uh, to host two such webinars, uh, specifically on water technology, for example. And before COVID-19, in late 2019, uh, we have also uh, worked together on a lot of fun physical activities, such as this uh, uh, talk on uh, how he actually traveled from North to South Pole uh, uh, with a AI system in a car crossing nine countries in 140 plus days uh, uh, that talks about the uh, value of human AI uh, symbiotic relationship moving forward. So it could be as simple as you expressing interest to the Polish Investment and Trade Agency or through any of us here today uh, so that we can actually keep that in mind and involve you in one of these suitable activities that happen throughout the year. I want to also touch a little bit on the deep tech economy in Southeast Asia. So David was already sharing with you about the overview of Southeast Asia as a market in general. We have a lot of people and our economies are fast growing, specifically on deep technology. Uh, five years ago, Southeast Asian investors and startups are already looking into deep tech and the countries that have been leading the charge would be Singapore, Vietnam, Thailand, Malaysia, as well as Indonesia. Just last week in Singapore, uh, Tamasic Holdings, which is the uh, sovereign wealth fund of Singapore, announced that they will be investing a billion Singapore dollars uh, into deep technology investments across a wide range of domains. And specifically, uh, there are emerging market opportunities such as in sustainability tech as the whole of Southeast Asia is looking at our green economy and how to decarbonize our industries using science and technology innovation. I also want to highlight the fact that 
there is a very concerted effort across Southeast Asian nations to come together and make this whole uh, environment more enabling to uh, businesses from outside of Southeast Asia, such as the Southeast Asia Manufacturing Alliance, uh, which, brought, which connect Singapore's strength with those of regional locations, such as in Vietnam and Malaysia, so that startups and businesses that are in the region could actually leverage this network for their manufacturing success. In addition to getting you connected and immersed into the ecosystem, one of the key feedback from uh, uh, startups that we have seen is that access to commercial business opportunities. And therefore, SG Innovate together with EDB have been hosting a series of reverse pitches where corporate actually present their problem uh, and business needs to the startup ecosystem. We have done so in supply chain and logistics with Snyder Electric, Unilever, and Bolori Logistics. We have also recently hosted such a session on advanced manufacturing, where Toyota, Infineon, Boss Rex Roth, as well as TVS Motors from India, actually uh, presented nine different areas where startups could work with them. And this is a great platform that we think uh, would offer opportunities directly to startups from anywhere in the world. In 2022, we will do this in uh, two areas, the circular economy as well as health innovations. And I want to end off with a open invitation to you uh, to join us at the Deep Tech Summit on the 8th to the 10th of November uh, in the morning CET time. Uh, this will be held in conjunction with the Singapore Week of Innovation and Technology where our business leaders in sustainability, agri-food, health, as well as manufacturing will be sharing how they are looking to engage with the startup ecosystem. If you would like to have a complimentary pass to attend the event, please drop me a note after this and I'll be happy to invite you to attend as our guest. And uh, with this, I would like to end the presentation uh, so that we can get started with the exciting panel discussion moving forward. Hi, everyone. I can see that uh, I am now joined by Yulia, as well as Lukas and Mashe uh, on stage. So without any further ado, uh, it is our great honor to actually have a global startup, a government official who looks at exports and uh, uh, enhancing that relationship between Poland and Singapore as well as an ecosystem leader in Mashi, who's been running a lot of uh, uh, smart tech accelerator program uh, to discuss how you from, from <coughs> CEO and Euro could actually access Southeast Asia's technology economy. I would now like to invite uh, each of my fellow panelists to start uh, with a brief introduction about yourself, as well as a little fun fact about your experience with Singapore or Asia uh, that you could share with the audience today. Um, perhaps I could start with Julia first. Sure. Hi, my name is Julia Markiewicz. I'm one of the founders in Silent Aid. Silent Aid is a software development company that helps banks to stop the financial crime. We work with tier one banks around the world, which is Standard Chartered, HSBC, and many other banks. And our journey starts in uh, Singapore, which I, I absolutely love. So what will be the most funny thing that I remember will be that, okay, so for whatever you would like to learn, you can learn it in Singapore because there is definitely a meetup about it. <laughs> there is definitely a meetup group about it, everything. <laughs> Even how to like, what kind of cheeses you have in France. Yes, there will be a meetup about it. Thank you, Julia. And uh, we will hear more from you as one of the biggest fans of Singapore uh, uh, on the tech innovation scene. Uh, next, could I invite you, Lukas, to introduce briefly your work and uh, uh, what your impression about Singapore and Asia has been so far? Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for the invitation. I'm very happy to be here today with you. 
Uh, I'm representing PAI, uh, Polish Trade and Investment Agency. As uh, Tuan mentioned, it's a government agency helping uh, Polish entrepreneurs, business people expand globally. Um, we are facilitating contacts with foreigners, with uh, foreign business, setting uh, partnerships and uh, building bridges so that you can have uh, um, easier access to the markets. As for the uh, fun facts about uh, Southeast Asia or uh, Singapore, well, actually, I haven't been in person in Singapore yet. There were some plans to visit the country, but the COVID pandemic stroke, so uh, there was no possibility. It was not possible yet, but uh, I hope to, to, to be there one, one day as we have a passionate team in Singapore, both in our trade office, uh, who are seeking and looking for, uh, for contacts with uh, business on a daily basis, as well as the uh, embassy, which is uh, also very much involved in the process, in the business. So, um, well, it's in front of me. I will. I, I hope to 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 be able to let, let you know one day my experiences from Singapore. With all the uh, uh, opening up of Singapore travel uh, recently, we do hope to have that opportunity soon enough, Lukash. And uh, last but not least, I would like to invite Marshi. Uh, from Exo Point to share his uh, experience and uh, work as well. Thank you, Tuan, for the invitation. Uh, my name is Maciej Majewski. I'm uh, running Axel Point, which is one of the Polish uh, tech accelerators, uh, targeting mostly Polish uh, startups, uh, specifically uh, from the fintech, medtech, insurtech um, verticals. Um, we've been cooperating with uh, Singapore partners for the last two years, specifically with uh, EDB, SG Innovate, uh, Enterprise Singapore, uh, Singapore Fintech Association, uh, several Singapore accelerators. Um, we only have positive uh, experiences. Uh, also, um, there was a huge support um, from the Polish uh, government and Polish trade and investment agency uh, team based in Singapore. Um, what concerns fun facts? Mm, um, it, what I loved about my visit to, to Singapore was, uh, was the food. And uh, if you are uh, thinking about one... Um, thing you should go to Singapore for, uh, then this, from my perspective, uh, this is the food. Thank you very much, Mashe. So yes, Singapore could be not only the, the easiest place to do business, but the most yummy and fun place as well, uh, hopefully. Now, uh, Julia, Lucas and Mashe, I want to also hear your thoughts uh, from your experience as startup government agency and a technology accelerator, what it is that are the main pool factors of Asia or Southeast Asia or Singapore that European startups should have in mind as they expand beyond Europe. Uh, this time, perhaps uh, I could start with you again, Mashi, uh, considering your uh, experience running the uh, accelerator program uh, over the past two years. So um, the, the obvious um, thing that, that we've uh, seen um, before um, during the, the first presentation is the size of the, uh, the, the South East, uh, Eastern, uh, South, um, Eastern Asia uh, market. Uh, close to 1 billion citizens. Um, Singapore is definitely the, the central hub, the gateway to, to Southeastern Asia from our perspective. Um, uh, offering, uh, obviously, huge opportunities for fintech, insurtech, regtech um, uh, related uh, startups. Uh, uh, but uh, I, th I strongly believe that European startups shouldn't be, um, uh, shouldn't be arrogant uh, when thinking about Southeastern Asia. Uh, European startups have a lot to learn from the Singapore uh, and local uh, companies and partners. The level of innovation is absolutely uh, spectacular there. So uh, if you are thinking only about uh, selling your products or services um, in Southeastern Asia, I don't think so. Uh, this is the, the, the best choice. The, um, from our perspective, I think it is to, to test your solution, uh, test and observe, 
uh, and uh, receive as much uh, feedback as it is possible uh, to to adjust your product to to the local uh, um, local southeastern uh, Asia markets. That is a very refreshing firma, perspective, that, Mashe, uh, that Southeast Asia is not just a sales market, but also good for uh, piloting and testing uh, of solution. I see yeah, that from from our also. perspective, uh, fintech uh, sector is specifically challenging in uh, in Asia. Not not only in Singapore, but uh, specifically in, in in Asia. So uh, probably. Many f European founders should look for inspiration uh, in Asia uh, to, to, to seek products, uh, ideas uh, that could be transferred even to, to Europe. Um, because they oftentimes uh, um, exceed uh, European customers' uh, needs. And uh, if you uh, come up with a, a brilliant imported but brilliant mm -hmm. Um, uh, idea and uh, bring it to Europe, you will get an unfair advantage. That's right. And I keep seeing Julia smiling and nodding, as you were saying. Uh, Julia, could you share with us what were the pull factors that uh, that uh, make you decide to found Silent 8 out of Singapore? So while some of my neighbors start, start to drill something, and I'm very sorry for that, <laughs> that was not planned. Uh, absolutely. So I have like, um, to, to answer your question, I have like two answers, like one will be like very long. So I start with the short one. So when you ask about like why Singapore is like actually the really great place um, to be for the startup. So, so if you think about it, like from our perspective is like, and what everyone here should, should go straight ahead and look is the Singapore Fintech Festival. So Singapore FinTech Festival is a place that every year, everyone from around the globe is visiting. So this is number one um, festival that is organized by a government and government is pulling the most experienced and best people from around the world. So this year there will be a Ben Horowitz and Kevin O'Leary. Like this is one of the people that everyone definitely know who they are and that, that the, 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 um, these people are like really important to meet and like also on, uh, on, on, on coming back to the uh, to our uh, Pike um, connections so anytime there is a FinTech festival and we have a book there so uh, the, the head of uh, Pike in, uh, in, in Singapore which is Magda Smolak she always come to us and, and introduce us to the Polish startups, which, which we introduce later on to some other uh, businesses. So this, this way I met actually the CEO of Blick. Everyone knows Blick in Poland. Blick is like the greatest achievements and, and ideas, in my opinion. So Dariusz Mazurkiewicz, I met him and then I connect, them, uh, connect him straight away to with Abu Dhabi Global Market, which is the Abu Dhabi Financial Center. So, the, what I'm trying to say here is like the, the most important part in Singapore that you have to understand is the connections. Never be afraid to introduce yourself and to talk to the strangers. So when it comes to our story, when it comes to Silent Eight itself, so for us, the most important are the people. So when you start the journey, you have to make sure that you have the right people from the beginning, right? You need to have a leader, the salesman and the tech magician that will pull it all together. <laughs> and later on, when it comes to the growth, you need to make sure that you are in the right environment, which is Singapore. And why is the right environment not only for us, but for many of you? It's because it's all the headquarters of the uh, biggest companies around the world are there. All the investors are there. So you just have to tap into the uh, to this environment. We tap in by going to join accelerator. That was JFBI that we learn also about like lean methodology, and we tap in by meeting people all the time. Like I actually attend like two or three. Sorry for my neighbor. <laughs> I attend two or three networking events daily just to meet people, just to learn from them because the the knowledge is there on the street. Everyone is willing to share about the, their their failure and about their success. So later on, when you think about growth, 
what is really important to to realize that again this is the people that uh, that that are the key here right so with your growth you need to uh, you need to have ability to attract the right talent so here you can offer them the ESOP employee stock options to actually give them the the, the, the give them the actual value of like make the input of uh, of, of their work, right? So they can actually ha see how it works. So we have like, by this, when we started, we have the really great employees that join us, like Patrick Górski, Andrzej Haczewski, Wiktor Xiaowei, Tadeusz Klesz, Eric Chua. So this is one of the, uh, the first one that really rock our world. So later on, when, while, while you are growing, it's really important also to ask yourself, okay, so I have so many customers, but I cannot deliver to all of them, right? So, so this is like, there is like sweet learnings and there is tough learning. So you have to ask yourself, okay, so which customers I'm choosing for my growth because I cannot deliver to everyone. And then why also, because being in Singapore, you can say like, okay, so I'm successful. I have a customer, so what I can do? Will I like wait forever to grow? and attract many more talents, or I will talk to the investors. So it's it's a key here, again, people, to, <laughs> to find the investor that not always, not, not only have like the knowledge and they're like well-known in the market, but also the investors that have experience and they're easy to talk to and you can brainstorm with them. So we are lucky to have Kubo Nui as our investor, who's like, uh, also, we have Paul Santos from Wavemaker Partners and Adam Niewinski from OTB. And I promise you, anytime we want to chat with them in the middle of the night to discuss some ideas, they're open. And this is how Singapore works. So you can have everyone just to, because everyone is so keen to, to, to share and, and get, get the ideas. So then later on, when you grow, and then I will tap into actually EDB. When we grow, when we decide to grow in US and UK and hire the people there, we were like, okay, so how we can do this? Let me talk to the EDB uh, because they are great partners in Singapore and they can help us understand how to employ people on this market, how this market works. So then we hire more people like Matthew Lenny, Anna Pesca, Sharon Sharma, Adam Stakura, only thanks to them also. So. So my key, like I'm finishing here, <laughs> hold, hold this, uh, like the last two sentences that I will share, it will be, don't be afraid to talk to the government. I know that we can have in Poland different opinion on this, but no, like in Singapore, like just share with whatever like question. No, there is no dumb questions there. And everyone is there to help you to, to elevate your idea and to help you find the partners the employees, whatever your heart desire, you just have to know what what you are up to. Julia, I could totally see how you are a big fan of Singapore there, and we'll come I'm back to, to that in a moment. Um, <laughs> Lukas, your your teammate in Singapore has actually been very actively sharing with us about Polish startup ecosystem and these startups that are looking to enter Singapore despite COVID-19. Uh, I want to hear from you next about what is so attractive about Singapore and Asia. And I want to add on a, a, a next question for your response as well. We have talked a lot about finance and fintech. What are some other high growth sectors that you are seeing in Singapore or Asia that would represent business opportunities for tech startups from Poland or Europe? Thanks, uh, Tuan. Uh, good questions. So coming back to the first one, uh, pool factors and why we consider Singapore and the region as, as um, promising and uh, attractive uh, for Polish uh, companies, Polish startups. So I think that if we look back at the Singapore uh, in history and the region, we, we all have in mind the term Asian Tigers. And uh, those economies have always been... Uh, um, the economy is with high growth uh, potential, uh, very productive, and it, uh, it's reflected in the international rankings when we see uh, top in, 
the most innovative and competitive uh, economies uh, in the world. Singapore is usually among the first uh, three, five or ten. Um, and, and, and so are the other countries, the neighbors. Um, I think that the, uh, the pull factors are first the economies, as, as, as it was mentioned, but also the society. So if we consider and uh, accept the fact that over the next eight to ten years, the middle uh, class in Asia, in Southeast Asia, will grow uh, by um, one billion people, um, that's an increase uh, or hard to even uh, uh, grasp from European perspective where we have 450 million consumers in the European Union or in Europe in general. So those numbers are pretty high. And uh, if we add to that that uh, the societies are open, forward thinking, thinking uh, innovative, and uh, they, they seek partnerships with uh, new, cli new clients, new countries, uh, then this is everything that can tell you that this is the place to be in the next uh, five to ten years. So I would recommend everyone uh, to, to consider uh, entering those markets already today. There is no time uh, to waste. Uh, just start the analysis, start making partnerships, uh, do the research, come to PAIH, uh, talk to SG Innovate, to EDB, to uh, Enterprise Singapore. We can all help. That's our job. Uh, we facilitate contacts, we build bridges, uh, set up some areas where we can talk and uh, brainstorm. This is where it uh, starts. And uh, I would name those as, as the main pull factors from our perspective. Uh, and uh, pull factors are pretty strong. And I believe that push factors are also strong. So we, uh, we uh, strive and we uh, aim to push uh, Polish companies uh, towards Singapore and towards Southeast Asia. And I think we do it uh, mm, quite uh, with, uh, with already with some successes, success stories. Um, there are uh, some examples of uh, Polish startups, Polish companies already present in the region or in Singapore uh, itself, uh, just to name medical algorithmics, RTB House, um, um, Mercator Medical, and, and many others. And I believe that we will see more uh, as, as uh, Polish companies will stop focusing and looking only towards US and Western part of Europe and will start uh, to look uh, mm, towards Asia. Um, I, I heard once this, uh, this term that Asia is Asianizing. I really like it. And uh, if you accept that uh, the fact that uh, we trade a lot between continents and we exchange goods and services uh, between the countries, we also have to accept the fact that continents are mostly trading within continents. So if you wish to um, scale in Asia, to build your presence in Asia, uh, to become successful in Asia, I believe that you have to set up your presence in Asia. Um, it will be hard to expand and to um, uh, um, conquer the market in a way from Poland. It's quite far away still, not that far away anymore since pandemia, COVID, uh, taught us that uh, the distance doesn't really matter today. You can talk to uh, everyone. Uh, uh, it's just the, the time zone that, uh, that, that um, dif differs, and you need to accept this, uh, this difference. But you can uh, have uh, meetings, B2B meetings, B2C meetings, uh, B2G meetings every day uh, without uh, huge costs, actually. And uh, you can, uh, there is no need anymore to travel to just have one meeting, for example, in Singapore and be back to Poland. You can uh, set up numerous meetings uh, one after another. Um, that's, that's, that's the answer for the first question. Um, the, the other was the one, could you, could you please uh, repeat the question, yes, the second one? Yeah, so I wanted to also have your opinion on high growth sectors. High growth, that yes. You are okay. pushing yes. all these companies to Asia for. That's it, okay. So I totally agree that fintech uh, is one of those uh, areas that uh, Polish companies could uh, uh, look at, but I believe that medtech, which is pretty strong in Poland, is uh, another uh, area where we could uh, absolutely amaze our friends in Singapore and in Southeast Asia with the solutions, products, ideas, services that our um, uh, entrepreneurs, our startup guys prepare. Um, and um, can share with 
with other s s uh, country societies, both uh, Poland bo and Singapore, but the regions in general, people are are aging. So we 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 completely have to start thinking about the silver economy, for example, and all those services for elder people, how to take care of them, how to engage them in the business, in the market, uh, how to help them uh, stay um, healthy and active, uh, even though when they retire. Uh, so, so medtech for sure. And then I believe that we have quite uh, uh, interesting um, experiences and products and know-how in the area of smart city. Smart city is a broad term, I, I, I know. Uh, so I would dive probably in, uh, in the direction of uh, uh, education, um, mobility, uh, but also the uh, construction, uh, eco-friendly uh, construction, um, dealing with all the uh, change in the uh, area of climate and uh, renewables, um, but also the um, safety of of uh, of life in in general. And uh, and uh, if we if we think about Singapore, I believe that many of us would would call this country. Uh, like a smart smart country or even smart nation so so we can not only share with you um, polish uh, experiences polish products uh, plans in this area but we have to accept also your perspective and your um, contribution to this uh, area which is i believe uh, strong and uh, really rich uh, so that's the area where we can totally exchange um, information views and start collaborate, collaborating even stronger than today. Thank you, Lukas. And uh, Julia just reminded us that there is now a direct flight from Warsaw to Singapore, 13 hours, and you'll be here for all of that conversations and business opportunities. Even though we are all used to Zoom and StreamYard by now, but I think nothing will beat an in-person uh, kind of conversation. Uh, I want to also uh, have this same question about high growth sector that uh, you are saying, Mashi, uh, in bringing European startups to Singapore and Southeast Asia. Uh, you are starting with fintech, but do you also see this program uh, in other sectors as well? Uh, one, please let me uh, come back to the previous question uh, because um, I, I would like to add one more thing that should be considered a pull factor. Uh, it's the it's the ethnical diversity of Singapore, uh, which is uh, first of all it's a driver for uh, innovation because it, uh, a, mi a mix of uh, various cultures and approaches ex experiences uh, um, is helping to uh, to improve basically everything. But also uh, this gives a, um, a unique opportunity. Uh, for networking in all the neighboring uh, countries. And uh, if you look at it from that perspective, getting the right links to the right people uh, is probably the, the crucial thing in terms of moving your business to, to Singapore and Southeast uh, Asia in, in, in general. And Singapore being the, uh, the hub with a large pool of... Uh, uh, mm, ethnical diversity uh, will definitely uh, help uh, in reaching the right people in the right uh, time. Also, it takes a lot of time to build relationships specifically in, in Asia. But once you have uh, the relationship, most likely it will stay for, for years and it will be a very strong uh, relationship. So. Uh, also, from that perspective, what, uh, what EDB, um, Singapore government, is, is doing to help onboard foreign founders and foreign startups uh, in Singapore um, is probably uh, a fantastic, uh, fantastic job uh, that facilitates uh, um, startups m moving to, to Singapore. Uh, what concerns the, the sectors um, that can be uh, really... Uh, um, sexy from the European perspective. Fintech, fintech um, insurtech, regtech, all that stuff um, is an easy choice, uh, but obviously um, every major financial um, um, corporation is um, based in Singapore or has uh, their, um, their Asian uh, offices there. Uh, Medtech, for sure. Um, one point being that uh, 
the, the, the silver economy uh, will slowly but um, definitely increase uh, in size, but also um, uh, local governments uh, will be um, forced or at least willing to, to improve the quality of life. And uh, through MedTech, uh, that can be achieved um, easier. Uh, I would go for smart cities um, um, because uh, obviously Singapore is a, a huge city, but uh, in the neighboring countries there are many more uh, huge um, huge cities that are facing uh, challenges that smart cities uh, or smart city technologies can um, can help uh, solve or address. Um, uh, from our perspective, from the Axel Point perspective, uh, since we are um, looking um, into the un uh, unmanned aerial vehicle uh, sector um, pretty strong uh, recently, I, I think this can also be a, a sector that can be interesting, not only for Singapore, uh, but, well, you can't, uh, mm, uh, you can't discuss with the ge geography. Uh, there are lots of... Um, uh, uh, islands uh, that are forced to to, to communicate uh, oftentimes through um, long through through means that take a lot of time to deliver goods or, or people. Uh, drones can be a, a, a good way to address this issue. Also, if uh, paired with medtech technologies, they can also uh, address um, uh, health uh, health issues, health problems. Um, what else? Uh, I would uh, I would also put um, uh, stress on uh, Martech technologies. Um, some of the Polish companies are already um, uh, working in Martech in, in Singapore, in Indonesia, um, for maybe not necessarily Southeast uh, Asia, but uh, Cosmos, uh, Polish startup, is uh, um, uh, has offices based in in, in Hong Kong on, or Shenzhen. And is doing great job um, in Martech. Uh, I think these are the uh, sectors that could be um, under rise in the next uh, years. Thank you very much, Mache. And uh, if I may also add, uh, an, a, a high growth sector in Singapore and Southeast Asia that would be the green economy as well. So Singapore is among the uh, few Southeast Asian countries that have already introduced uh, a green plan towards 2030. And so today there is a lot of emphasis on how uh, 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 green hydrogen, how decarbonization technologies could actually help uh, Singapore to achieve more sustainable growth. And that is definitely an area uh, uh, that European startups should actually pay attention to uh, in the next uh, uh, years to come. Now, having discussed the pull factors of Southeast Asia and Singapore, as well as the high growth sector, for the remaining time of our panel, for the next 10 minutes or so before we end off, uh, I want to go into something more specific that the audience may not uh, 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 have heard or, or read about in public domains. So Julia, for example, uh, you started in Singapore and now silent aid solutions are being deployed in hundreds of cities around the world. So you must have made a lot of right decisions uh, out of Singapore so far. But if there was something uh, that, that you want to share that impact the growth and scale up experience of silent aid the most whether it is something a right decision or a not so right decision that you want to share with the audience what would that be yeah i think i will like my elaborate from <laughs> from prior uh, from prior answer that to, to, to summarize my prior answer it will be like the the real right decision was to to start in singapore Right, because this is the place, and I'm telling this also as a woman founder. So I always felt and encouraged in this place. So I never have a situation when I have in many different places that no one listen to me because I'm a young woman. No, everyone is like very respectful. Everyone is open-minded. This is the place. Like if you know what you are talking about, everyone will listen, and the knowledge is there everywhere. It's like there was like many events even when when the startups just were starting about um i cannot share it uh, the name because it's uh, it's a swear so it's basically 
failure nights, let's call them, <laughs> when the startup share like how they fell uh, in the business. So that the, the, the most important part is, uh, and what I would like everyone to take on is like, don't be afraid to network with people. And it's not only like in Singapore, but also in Poland, right? We, we might not have like this strong vibe uh, in, in our country, but we are changing and everyone is like, if you really want to ask questions, if you really want to learn, people are just start to opening and like everyone knows someone. There is like, if, if you want to reach to someone, there is definitely someone who knows them and can introduce you to. So that will be the, that will be the, the most important uh, parts to not, not be afraid to talk to government, to agency, to other startups. Yeah, if you have like any question about the Singapore, I'm also happy to connect. Also, if you know anyone to, who would like to join our company, I'm also happy to connect. <laughs> that is an open invitation to everyone that wants to work with you there, Julia. And I do agree on the value of failures as well. So on our part, we have also been organizing small group conversation where founders who have gone through the journey share with young uh, aspiring uh, people who are thinking about doing it. So definitely I could empathize with, uh, uh, and agree with what you have shared. And um, Lucas, I want to revisit uh, what you said earlier about how the Polish Investment and Trade Agency is also pushing made in Poland technologies to uh, go east and uh, be set up in the Asia uh, as Asia is Asianizing. How specifically is the agency doing this uh, to support Polish startups to expand to Singapore and Southeast Asia or Asia in general? Um, thanks for the question. Um, well, I believe that uh, if you if you if you plan uh, the expansion, you need uh, at least four things to make it successful. So you need the product, you need the brand, you need uh, financing, and you need a uh, support of the system ecosystem. Paich, uh, the agency that I am representing, is part of this ecosystem. Um, we are. Uh, in, if, if you look at our age, uh, so we are quite uh, quite fresh, uh, quite young uh, organization, four years old. But I believe that over the past four years, we have proved in numerous uh, occasion that uh, our team, dedicated team, very engaged team, is willing to promote Polish brands, promote Polish companies, techs, uh, startups and um, technologies abroad. Um, what we can do specifically is for sure we can be a partner uh, that guarantees or secures a soft landing on the market, on the foreign market. So for us, you can, uh, each company uh, can, can have an access to a lot of information that will, uh, I, I hope, I believe, um, um, help make right decisions. Uh, so uh, information is the key element, I believe. So you need to know the market, you need to know the people. As Julia mentioned, you, you need to have a network. Uh, you need to be uh, in there, so uh, on, on the on the on the spot uh, to to present yourself to the um, local people. Um, so through our events, uh, be it in the form of uh, virtual events or um, s s regular events uh, like trade fairs, conferences, seminars, we we help our uh, companies uh, become uh, recognizable. To, to the foreigners. Uh, we have uh, uh, the offices uh, around the world, one of them is mentioned in Singapore, so you can easily uh, use the, the venue for um, organizing uh, B2B meetings with local partners. That's uh, what we can assist with. Uh, we can prepare and uh, verify the uh, standing of the local partner. We can set up uh, meetings in advance for you. Uh, so the, the 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 portfolio of the uh, uh, services is quite wide, uh, and it can be customized. So we believe that uh, well, there is a, always a group of companies that can be served in a in, in a same way in the very beginning, but then later on, everyone has to be uh, treated separately and uh, in a unique form. And when I told you about the ecosystem, I want also everyone to remember that. There is uh, 
there are other mm, institutions in Poland in a so-called group, uh, a Polish uh, Development Fund Group, PFR Group, uh, that secures financing and uh, help you uh, with uh, with the monetary side of your activities. So uh, there is PARP, which uh, runs uh, several different projects uh, annually that delivers financing. There is a, there are banks or uh, uh, funds that uh, gives you the um, uh, the money, the capital to initiate your per, uh, presence on the foreign markets. Uh, there are uh, institutions that guarantee so uh, ensure the trade. Uh, so, so I believe that the system today in Poland is uh, better than ever before, um, and of course, it's not uh, uh, it's not uh, the end of what we have to uh, or what we need, what we should propose to the to the business. We um, quite uh, it, the pandemic, uh, the COVID showed it uh, that uh, the system is actually trying to. Um, actively uh, adapt to the needs of uh, business people. So one instrument, one mechanism, one service, one product cannot be utilized over the longer period of time. It's not possible anymore. Pandemia is just one of the risks that uh, materialized, but many other are in front of us. So um, what, what, what we all, I believe, learned from COVID is that we have to accept risk to greater extent, and we have to prepare for uh, for for scenarios that uh, maybe are out of our um, scope right now. We we don't think about them even. So that would be it. Well, thanks, because I am most happy that uh, support for Polish startups to go overseas has never been better, and I would echo that the. Uh, 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 Pyre team in Singapore, Magdalena, and everyone at the embassy have also been very helpful uh, uh, to connect bridges uh, uh, there. Having said that, uh, I do think that uh, I also want to understand how ecosystem support may be even better moving forward. Uh, so before we close, uh, I want to, to hear the thoughts from Mashi. Uh, I think uh, you work the mo with with most uh, uh, startups uh, here. Uh, what have been some of the feedback from them about ecosystem support, uh, for example, that uh, we could do better uh, as government agencies and as ecosystem players? We've been cooperating with um, uh, partners from Singapore for the last two years. Uh, so for us, it's a bit too early to... Um, to understand how uh, how the um, final impact of our cooperation will look like, specifically in terms of startups moving to to Singapore, our last year winner due to uh, COVID um, uh, wasn't even able to uh, to go to Singapore to visit and to pitch during the S Singapore fintech festival, uh, not to mention building real life um, uh, relationships and networks uh, in Singapore. So. We need some uh, some time to to understand that and and to assess it, but uh, from our perspective, uh, running an acceleration program from Poland without partners locally absolutely doesn't make sense. First of all, uh, we received huge support from uh, from Łukasz uh, team uh, in Singapore. Um, mostly due to, to Magda and her experience in uh, startup ecosystem uh, before joining um, a Polish trade agency. So that, that's the first um, thing that helps to understand the mindset of uh, both sides, of people, uh, startupers in Poland and uh, uh, ecosystem representatives in, uh, in Singapore. Secondly, uh, we partnered with uh, government agencies like uh, EDB, um, like uh, Enterprise uh, Singapore, like, um, like SG Innovate. Uh, and all these organizations are helping in soft landing, in onboarding, in accelerating uh, startups uh, from Europe uh, with Singapore partners, which is a key uh, thing because you, you get the first client immediately that you can test your product or service um, uh, locally. Um, and last but not least, uh, we have uh, support from 
uh, commercial uh, organizations like uh, local Singapore um, accelerators, Block 71, uh, Tribe Accelerator, so really top of mind uh, local brands uh, that also can help uh, in soft lending and uh, understanding how the local market uh, works. So mm, from the, our perspective, uh, networking, and finding local partners is an absolute uh, must if you want to, uh, to, to, to go to uh, Southeast Asia. But then again, uh, we have two observations. Uh, first of all, if you are a startup uh, and just really starting your activity, then I would advise uh, either to uh, wait uh, a bit um, or go all in uh, and move your business totally to, to Asia. Find your uh, find a fundraise uh, in Asia uh, and build your product only for for uh, Asian markets. Uh, if you are scale up, uh, then there is no other way than opening at least a branch uh, in Singapore. You can't do business uh, virtually, so this this is a, a must for for startups. Thank you very much, Mashi. Thank you. And, uh, we have come to the end of the panel and the key takeaway that I would leave with our audience uh, today from all of your insights and sharing is that just do it. Uh, there's no better time. Uh, uh, don't be afraid to actually reach out, connect, network. Uh, there is a growing middle class, but do not see Singapore or Southeast Asia as only a sales market. There's a lot of potential to do R&D research collaborations here as well. Uh, and as soon as you get uh, Lucas support for the soft lending into Singapore, uh, EDB, the Singapore Global Network and SG Innovate uh, will come on board to help you connect with local partners, which is the point that uh, Lucas just made as well. And with this, I want to thank Julia, Lucas and Marshi for sharing your insights with us about entering Southeast Asia and Singapore. And I do hope that we'll be able to have a good meal with you in Singapore uh, uh, soon enough. Thank you very much, everyone, and goodbye. <laughs>